one of the reasons why she wanted to publish with me, I think, was one, because I was the first person who said, oh, let me publish the address book. Nobody else, for some dumb reason, ever said to her, I want to publish the address book. The other thing is that I said, I will get you a literary audience. Your work is meant to be read. The art world does not read it. They, they are entertained by the idea, and they are really provoked and interested in the idea, but they don't sit down and read it. I will get your work read, which I did. It was in The New Yorker. It was in Harper's. You know, David Eulen picked it for top 10 best of list. So it's just a first round proof, but see this is blue, how this pops, and that's got a lot more red in it, and that one is really dull. So we'll have to, this is just the first round, but then the question is, do we do it on white paper? And clearly we do not, because that looks terrible. The first proof is always terrible. It's just the way it goes. I started Siglio because I wanted to make a space for the kinds of works that because they're uncategorizable, because they are this unique mixture of the literary and visual and thus not quite comprehensible to one camp or another, um, that I could make a space for them and build audiences for them. For me, the hybrid work is often misunderstood it's often sequestered in one world or another. Um, it's not given its due or read as deeply as it could be without really proactive advocacy. I first learned about Dorothy Ianon through the work of Dieter Roth. Um, I included her work in It Is Almost That, a collection of image text work by women artists and writers that I edited a few years ago. And then I was having coffee with Trini Dalton, who is a fiction writer and an art critic. And she and I were talking about different artists that we loved, and we discovered our mutual admiration and awe of Dorothy Ianon and said, oh, let's do a book. So that's sort of how this came about. She is all about this ecstatic unity. Her work is exuberantly sexual, it's transgressive, it is sort of proto-feminist in this really interesting way because she was making work in the early 60s and while American feminists were doing something quite different in terms of both art and political agitation, Dorothy was ensconced in Iceland with Dieter having lots and lots of sex and drawing and writing about it and her sort of journey into, I guess, sexual liberation was very different and is narrated very differently than one might find in um, artwork by women of the same era in the United States. One of the things that Siglio does that's really different from, say, traditional art books, which are monographs or catalogs, I'm not documenting the work. I'm using the book as a space for the reader to actually experience the work. And because Siglio publishes these literary visual hybrids, what's really critical about that is uh, creating a space in which the work is really legible. So you can, you can not only see the details, but you can read the language. So whether it's Dorothy Ianone or Jess or Sophie Call, any of those artists who've been published in other places, generally you can see the fact of the work and you get a kind of resemblance of it, but you can never really dig in and read it. And so the format of the book, being able to hold it in your hands, it's not like some huge oversized coffee table book, 
Um, but it's also not so the reproductions aren't so small. You can't see them. I mean, it's all the getting everything in the right balance so that if you read this book, you feel like you will have had a parallel experience to the exhibition space. And in fact, with a lot of the work I publish, you wouldn't even be able to read the work in the exhibition space. You'd need the time that a book allows. And so with Dorothy, I think one of the reasons why she's really underrated is because people haven't read her. She's an extraordinary writer, and she has these incredible stories she tells, and they take these such interesting tangents and turns, but you don't know that unless you get through the text, which is really hard to do in a gallery space, is to stand in front of something and read it. So that's what's really, I think, unusual and special about what Siglio does. (music) 